Welcome back to Hazardous Endeavors. Huzzah! Hello. Oh my goodness, this yeah. place. Let's do this. Yes, indeed. Welcome back to Hazardous Endeavors, the 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons actual play podcast brought to you by Digital and & Dice. And where we found our intrepid adventurers... That's us. That, that would be you. That is us. Lindo Espina, the beautiful thorn. Yes. Elliot Frostmoon. Hi. Jackson Shaw. Hello. And Wilf. We're in an awful place. Agreed. Why are we all greeting the air? No, I, I, I usually do. Oh. We're not greeting the air. We're greeting this guy right here who's pointing that direction. Yes, where we find our intrepid adventurers. You are in, well, it once was a town in what probably had a different name before it became the Rotting Hills. What name it had has been lost to the annals of history. And you are standing in the central courtyard area, surrounded by the many kneeling corpses of many questing knights that seem to have been in a some sort of quiet homage or pose of reprise that were pointing towards a uh, stage where a woman has been hung. And... Very shortly before you got here, everything was fine and going about their daily business of just being dead. And uh, shortly after your arrival, they... We killed her again. Yes, they woke back up. You fought off a banshee, some sword wraiths, and uh, I believe you recovered a particular item, Wilf. Oh, yes. Um, a uh, little medallion? It was a locket. Locket, yeah. Yeah. With a... a, a very well maintained, uh, not quite fully degraded oil painting inside of a very beautiful woman. Oh, a cameo. Yeah, it's a cameo. It did. That, that's what a cameo is. It's got but it's uh-huh. something Oh, has it got full. the lady's face on it? It does. Yeah. Oh. It's something f- that's not tarnished in the Rotting Hills. It might be magic. Do you want me to look at it? Uh-huh. Be helpful. Uh-huh. He's raising his eyebrow all sorts of funny. Well, I mean, we could check and see if it's magic, yeah? Sure. Um, we'll need to find a place to sit for ten minutes. Oh, I don't think I'm that curious yet. We can we can wait until... Actually, uh, actually, I am curious about this myself, as I am looking around. Is there uh, any place that we might hide and crash for a little bit? There are what le- what the, the, what's left of buildings nearby. As a matter of fact, uh, I believe there was a, a bottle... You, uh, that was pulled out of the remains of an inn. Uh, and there are other buildings that are in equally bad repair, but they have at least two standing walls and a small bit of roof. Okay, in fairness, we have slept in shittier places. Uh, you know, honestly, I, uh, upon self-inspection, realized that uh, I have just almost died like Three times Keep in the dick. past half an hour. Yeah. I think that it might be a great idea. Sounds like I've a Wednesday. I've also used <laughs> up most of my top-level firepower. Say it out loud. We don't know who's listening. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to have a conversation with you before we set out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, um... Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, what? It's good to the inn. I mean, We've yeah. slept in more sins. I mean, at least this one may or may not have little undead cold children that look like, you know... Oh, they were adorable and you know it. Tiny little raccoon people. Were they raccoons? They... I thought they were. I made sure those ones boiled. <sighs> boiled sort of awful. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, try to at least make ourselves a little bit of a lane to... Mm-hmm. Yep. We head to the inn. Okay. You make your way over to the remains of the inn, uh, which you had passed just a, a bit prior, and upon looking in, you see that there are like fallen timbers and supports that are uh, the, the entire center part of the inn seems to have collapsed inward. Uh, and but you are able to find a spot off to the side where you're able to kind of string up some of your tents and uh, give yourself a bit of cover and a little bit of intervening terrain from anything that might be walking by. Hey, Mr. Lindo, before eh. we get finished, eh. could you make it a little bit more hard to see? A little bit more hard to see? You mean, like, rough it up a bit? Oh, I, I don't know, maybe some camouflage or some form of variety? Um, 
Suppose. Mr. Wolf probably can help you. I'm not very good at that type of stuff, but I know you're very de you're f fairly decent at it. I am obviously superior at many things. Yes, I suppose I can try this thing. Okay, I try to hide our encampment. Okay, uh, why don't you go ahead and roll me a stealth check, just to kind of build up a little bit of I'm excess going, stuff. I'm going to assist... All right. Add that because that is you know. roll roll advantage on that then, Lindo. Is, you know, no, you want to put you want to put the stick there. What? You want to put the stick there? Yeah. Over here. Right, right, right there. Yeah. Okay. Hold on a second. Beautiful. Adjusting, adjusting. Oh. This looks good. Net twenty. Okay. So you are able Hold. to take uh, various kind of rotten timbers and other bits. Uh, prop them up, use them as camouflage to the point where when you're done it, it almost looks like it's just like a kind of a dark hole in a little bit of fallen wood, but when you make your way through, you're actually in a, a nice cozy little area where you're able to make camp. See, I told you, the stick right there. Perfect. You think you think that is what made the difference? Not the fact that I literally made a void of nothingness? Look how cool I am. Oh yeah. Hold out my hand, and I create, like, a little void in my hand with magic. Okay, that's not yeah. fair. Z. It's right there. It's you and your magic. just, just right, right, right there. Like, okay, see. Puff. So, so yeah, the stick was a you great You know what you can do with that, that, that void? You can put your stick in that void. That's right, sir. No, it's perfect right there. I do not need to hear where Will, Mr. Will puts his stick in what voids. In his void! Yeah, I'm taking first watch. I haven't seen my ex-wife in quite some time. <laughs> so you gather your things, you settle down for the evening, uh, try to... Do you, do you light a fire, or do you just go with cold rations? I think... Elliot cold. is perfectly fine with cold rations. Of course he is. <laughs> <laughs> all, of, uh, all of his wineskins are now popsicles. I start a fire. Okay. So you have a cozy little fire in your hideaway. Uh, you're able to cook up a uh, little meal and, uh, yeah, relax the evening away with Jackson being the one on first watch. Yep. Any second or third watch? Oh, I'll take uh, second watch. I will suppose. third it. Okay. Um, I'm going to join Mr. Wilf on second. No, oh, raw. Okay. So let's let's start at first watch. Jackson, if you would make me a perception check. Uh, of course, of course. Let's see what we have here. Nineteen. Okay, so, so as e again, evening as it comes down, because it was actually fairly early, I believe, when you guys had set out in the previous uh, on this day. So you're going to spend a great deal of time relaxing here and just kind of hiding away. So the the afternoon passes uneventfully, but as it gets on towards evening, when you're actually bedding down, uh, you are you know watching out over kind of through the slats and fallen timbers of the inn, the doorway that you pass through and you're watching the the main road outside that you had traveled into town with and every so often you're you you see like little wisps of movement but then just a good solid hour of nothing no no air movement no just no no bugs nothing utter stillness outside mm, it seems uh, quiet out here too quiet. And aside from that, nothing interesting happens during your watch. Uh, no news is good news. Okay, so you wake up Wilf and Elliot. Yep. All oh, right. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Watch. That's yep. the fun time. I'm gonna roll advantage, I guess, due to the fact that we're watching together. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'd probably be the best. Because I know you have a wonderful perception. I am so perceptive. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. So the two of you are keeping watch, looking out. Again, the, the the hole in the ceiling that you guys can see out of is seeing nothing but kind of low-hanging clouds and the vastness of, uh, of the darkness above you. Outside the front, you see, again, nothing moving, not a single breath of wind, not a, not a, any movement whatsoever, except on the horizon for a brief moment, you see what look to be uh, almost like two torches moving, but 
at first you thought maybe they were on the edge of town, but then as you follow your gaze, you actually look up and you're seeing them on, on the far horizon. Something massive, just gargantuan, towering over the surrounding landscape, is walking along. And you see these two pinpricks of red seem to be scanning around the ground. But it seems to walk by on the periphery. Mr. Welf. Y- yeah? I think, I think we need to change how we've been doing things in this place. Oh? Oh, pray tell. We've been going through it like a bull in a china shop. I wouldn't say quite a bull in a china shop, but at least some cousin of a full-grown Oryx. Yes. And it's caused you to fall down how many times today? Oh, a couple. We need to be more careful. I think Mr. Jackson needs to stay closer to the squishies. Me, and you, and Lindo. And I think you might need to use your magic in more creative ways to throw our enemies off balance. It's it's a thought. It's definitely a thought. Um, the only kicker is uh, Jackson's very strong when things in his arm or arms reach. Yes, that doesn't mean we we need you guys. We need to stick closer together than we have been. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the one of the kickers on that one is we need we need uh, everyone to get up if because at least three of us are gonna be rushing forward fairly frequently because that's sort of a thing. Yes, I'm. I will stay with you more often. Yeah. Jackson's really handy at like making sure people don't die frequently. So I think it, it'd be for the best. You know. Mm-hmm. And All I'm saying is, we should take. A few more seconds planning on what we're doing before we do things. I, I get what you're telling me. I do. I do. But I won't lie that sometimes we just sort of get caught up in the moment. It's all right. It, it keeps things alive. We haven't died yet. Oi, oi, oi. Shut up. You do not need to watch with your mouth. I am Rock sleeping here. in hey, the hey, treetop. Hey. Hey. When the wind you and your magic cradle. Right. So, like I was saying, it, it, it really is just a thing of uh, if we can come up with a plan quick enough, we'll do that. But we got to be quick with it. Understood. We have many options to throw anybody off balance, Mr. Wolf. Especially the two of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, magic's fun like that. <laughs> so, uh... I wonder what that big thing was. Something we do not need to find out. I don't like it. And so you guys pass the rest of your watch, commenting on this, that, and the other thing that uh, comes to mind. Small lights in the distance. Every so often you see a little, almost like a, like a crack of lightning across the sky, but it's very brief, and it doesn't seem to illuminate nearly as much as you think it should. It's almost as you're looking at just kind of a a break in the sky for a moment but no light seems to reach the ground so anything else you wish to do on your watch mm, not particularly i no. probably put a few of my alarm spells out before i went to sleep but okay. do you spend your 10 minutes to take a look at the cameo hmm? the cameo the locket Oh, yeah, yeah, I definitely do that. Okay. So, you... I'm assuming you're doing a detect magic ritual? Not detect magic, I have identify as a ritual. Ah, identify. All right. So, you spend the requisite time holding on to it, and what you end up getting out of it is not magic, per se. Okay. It seems that this has a residual, almost like a an aura about it, that doesn't seem to be any sort of magic that you recognize. It almost like it's faded away, but the protection that was rewarded to this seems to have been, like it was in an aura, like it was being held in stasis. But in and of itself, it isn't magic. But your Identify is able to recognize that this is an extremely old piece. 
you you are talking that this is uh, pre uh, war. Um, I would say that this is not something we should keep. I have a feeling this is something we should sell. All right. I mean, like at at the moment, I'm sort of I'm sort of attached to it because I just picked it up. But uh, but yeah, I suppose when we get back to the towns, um, it also might. Due to the one who's holding it, it might have religious connotations. Maybe Jackson can look at it. The one thing that gets you is that the end of your spell, as your ritual is ending, a single, almost whispered word seems to kind of carry across the periphery of your hearing. And you weren't quite sure that you heard it right, but you could have sworn you heard something say the words, a token of love lost. I don't say anything about that. Okay. Yeah. Well, just, it's nice. I, I think I, li- I like the look of it. Is is it nice? And you know, maybe, maybe we could sell like the little oil painting inside it, and I could like get a picture of a very nice hat or something put into it. Right. And so your watch comes to an end, and you wake Lindo up. Lindo, Lindo, what? Lindo, Lindo, what? It's not snakes. It's not snakes. It's snakes. It's snakes. Snakes. What? It's not snakes. What? What? It's your turn for watch. Wait. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 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 I sneak. uh, I got this. Ellis stays awake for just a little bit longer. Okay. We'll uh, do a couple squats. Sort of just bundles up, curls up like a kitten, and falls asleep. Couple jumping jacks. Oh no. Yeah. Um, What? Yes. Um, it's a secret. Okay. Okay. What is the secret? Do you remember the secrets that we gave to those guys? Uh, yes. Yes, the one where your name is not your name? Ah, uh, yes. I remember that I was supposed to not say that, but then I did. Yes, I remember this thing. Okay. Do you remember Wilfs? I tried not to pay attention to him too much. You had a prophecy that where he was going to die. Uh-huh. I think those signs are starting to come true. Oh, that is unfortunate. What are his signs? I am a Gemini. Thanks, Lendo. I'm just saying that if I cannot handle another, would you help me keep an eye on him? Another what? Another death. Another Zug Tug. Oh. Yes. Eh. <clears throat> yes, so... I will do this thing for you. Is Wilf, though tiny and unfashionable, he's my friend. Yes. Just keep an eye when we're fighting. This is a very dangerous place, Mr. Lindo. I will keep a sharp eye. I'm the most perceptive of perceptive. I'll make sure no harm will come to us. Okay. Keep an eye out while I'm gathering my spells. Okie dokie. I settle down next to my fire. <laughs> All right. And go ahead and give me a perception check for that last watch. Da, 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 da. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, 14 plus 7. Okay. Uh, okay. 21 is more than enough. You you, you seem like to... Like an eagle. As you're kind of making your patrols around the edge of camp and taking a look out... You see off in the distance what looks to be uh, almost like a fog. Seems to be rolling over some hills kind of towards the edge of town. Hmm, It doesn't seem to be coming towards you. It seems to be kind of going alongside the town. And as you look closer, you actually see that the fog is made up of hundreds of ghostly warriors. They seem to be marching silently across the field. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, Do they seem to be noticing me? They don't. They seem to be m- making their way somewhere else. Ah, okay. I keep an eye on them, but I do not say anything. Okay. So it's very difficult. Yes, I'm sure. So aside from that, your watch goes by uneventfully. And you all wake up the next, quote-unquote, morning, uh, when there's slightly more light in the sky. 
and good you morning, all feel good morning good morning everybody you feel refreshed but it seems like worse so like you're dirty but more than just in a physical sense I mean, uh, I mean yeah if you've looked at us we're pretty constantly dirty it's never pleasant waking up in this place except for Elliot Elliot seems to be mysteriously clean like all the time what is the story with that I mean do you think it's because of his icy composure um, oh eh? I see what you did there Lindo do you want to see how I do it okay press the digitation and suddenly Lindo your your clothes are clean and pressed ha <laughs> now you're the only one who stinks and also Jackson I'm willing to do that for all of you. It doesn't take much. But I stunk less first. Um, I also take my do my morning rituals. Okay, you you pull up your abjurer shield and yep. your various normal yeah, morning abjurer shield, um, mage armor. Okay. So the, you all ready yourselves. Check your weaponry. Make sure your equipment is nice stowed, yep. and uh, yeah, morning start making ritual. Your way. Working out that abjurer. <laughs> Making sure it's uh, he has a tight core. It's the ab abjurer. Yeah, that's it. Right, the ab abjurer, one thousand. Oh my goodness, Lindo. You're just now realizing this about him. No. But what about the biceps? Don't need them. Well, I mean, <laughs> wizard. <laughs> so, um, levity aside, we're supposed to go which way now? We followed south. We need to follow the hands of the the people here guiding us. Do not you remember oh. what Willis said? Oh yeah, something about the the people, uh -huh. the 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 towns that lived and the towns that died, and the people should point something with the things in the dark side. Yeah, we need to follow them to a cathedral, I believe. Oh, probably one of Palor, but we'll see. I saw a big ghostly army. Does that count? Um, what? I think it's... It wasn't bothering me. What about all these statues? They used to live here, yeah? I mean, I don't they're, these they're, statues... they're corpses. They're not quite statues. Oh. I am sad now. Okay. So, I guess we head out of the inn and we look at which way everyone's pointing. Okay. So, you make your way out and you take a look around the central square again. And yes, upon examination, you are noting that all of them do seem to be pointing the same way, which does lead out of town, uh, kind of to the southwest. And as you guys kind of start making your way out of the town square, kind of between the uh, old ruined foundations of several buildings, you make your way out the side of town, out into kind of a big open clearing, and what you are looking at is a, a slow decline, a, 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 the, the, the hill that you're standing on going down into a bit of a valley in front of you. And the mist is clearing here and there, and this is actual mist. Okay. Uh, as it's clearing away as you're getting close, you can see, uh, just like you did on the, the north end of town, you see a field of what look to be discarded weapons. Uh, swords stuck in the ground, piles of bones. You're looking at an ancient battleground that stretches down into this valley. Yeah. I, I bet you this is where all the ghosts came from, yeah? You know, that's probably pretty sound. You know, they, pe you hear people say, why well, can't we be following the butterflies? But did you know that butterflies eat corpses? Do butterflies eat corpses? Yeah. I will never look at the butterflies the same way again. It's terrifying. This does seem to have been a mighty battle. It does, but we need to go through it. A long, long time ago. But I don't necessarily want to be at the bottom of the valley. That sounds like a good way to get us, you know, the high ground. Uh, you know, that's a I little paranoid for saying, being in a giant place of death. But honestly, if we're following prophecy to get to a place. We might actually want to stick to the letter. Understood. I take yeah, a look I... around out across the, the field to see if there's anything that I can find a path. Okay. Or... Go ahead and roll me a perception check, please. All right. Nat. 
Nat 20? Yep. Nice. Well, okay. So you notice several things. You're standing there up on the top of this hill looking down into the valley. Uh, close to hand, you note that a lot of the skeletons you're seeing, unlike some of the ones further away, you're seeing these ones uh, less armor, more like scraps of fabric and things like that. You also note that a grand majority of the skeletons here seem to be wearing manacles and chains about their limbs. The weapons that they seem that, that they are they're stuck in the ground nearby are of crude make, uh, not necessarily the, the finery that you've seen elsewhere. Even the degraded finery. These look like they were made cheaply and handed to those who died equally. Hmm. Possibly a, a slave army or a slave revolt. That is uh, unfortunate, mostly for these slaves, because they are dead. Species? Um... Seems like a mix. Uh, some dwarf, some human. Uh, very rare halfling, but a lot of human. Uh, and the other thing, Jackson, with your nat 20, as you're looking, you further down in the valley, you see what looks to be... Uh, you're, you, you think it's a building. It's hard to see at the distance and in the light, but you can see what almost looks like the outline. A, a darker uh, series of, of right angles against the darkness ahead of you. Hmm. There might be a building down there. Possibly a cathedral that once held hope? Eh, there's only one way to find out. Oh. Here's hoping for the best. <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah, mm -mm. you know. No, oh, they stretchy now because this place sucks. Yeah, Alright, it's, it's gone. It's yeah. True. Right, so, let's, uh... Yes, but... Jackson, I would like you to go first... And then Wolf and Linda will be behind them, and I will be in the back. What if I on. sneeze too hard, and then I stop walking, and then you walk in front of me? How about we walk in sort of a diamond pattern, with uh, Jackson in front, you and I getting sort of behind him, but to the side a little bit, and then Elliot right behind us. What? What? Why are we deciding which way we walk? We just because go forward, yes? We're trying to be smart about things so that, you know, people don't die. Huh. Oh. Okay, Elliot. I got you. Okay, All right. Blendo. Let's do it. I'm still leading the way, so I, go, I start going. I mean, yeah. Okay. So I find that uh, life is a lot easier when the things that want to kill me have a Jackson between them and me. Fair. So you start making your way down into the valley and you pass hundreds of these skeletons uh, that seem to have just been laid to rest where they lie. And you see old, rusted, pitted manacles and chains uh, adorning almost everything in sight. And as you're making your way forward, you're, you're starting to get a better look at the thing you're heading towards. And in less of a full building, you're seeing walls that are about hip height at most to you, Jackson, and a lot of rubble laying around. The, the immediate hundred foot area around what used to be presumably this, this building seems to have exploded outwards, and you see ruts dug into the earth and chunks of stone that seem to have been forcibly blasted outwards, tumbling around the area. Mm, that does not look like to have been a good thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. It could have been just some spontaneous redecoration, you know. I have that <clears throat> sometimes. Yeah. Not this violently, I hope. And this... No, no, it takes extreme amounts of wit, well, have you time, a... effort. Have you ever fed an Albert a burrito? Um, this looks probably from the... If this is from the War on Ascension, of Ascension, this and this is one of the great battles of it, this might have come from one of the two demigods. That is a possibility. What were their names again? Um, Kalendor and the Right Hand of Bane. It's not much of a name. Right Hand of Bane. When you take a test and you write that down, you get to fill in all the little bubbles. Right Hand of Bane. Well, I mean... Really, I think it's one of those things of names getting lost in the ages of antiquity and things uh -huh. and junk and stuff. Uh -huh. 
He might have had a real name, but he used that one to signify his station. He that could, might have been more important to him. He could have been named Norris. That That's not a bad name. Charles? I like it. No, Norris. I, I like Norris. So it's going to be uh, Calendor Broadblade versus Norris. Mm. Right. I like it. So you make your way across this field, and the bodies seem to lessen in number the closer you get to the walls. And as you do get to where there would have been a set of double doors, uh, at least an opening large enough for a, a fairly large set, you're looking out at what's left of the foundation of this building, and dead center in the middle of what was probably a modest church, maybe at most 200 foot from side to side. And as you're, as you're looking at it, centered inside the ruins of this church is what looks to be a depression in the ground, shaped like a hand, but a massive hand, at least 30 feet across. It seems to be pressed down into the earth and the stone seems to have pushed it down at least about two feet. And dead center, right at where the wrist would be, there is a tall, white marble pillar that is jutting up out of the ground, hanging from the top of it, it's about seven foot or so, are what look to be two manacles that are still in fairly good condition, considering. And this stands in stark contrast with everything you can see. But you think Mitch has that, been here? Nothing else. I feel like this is like a Mitch size handprint. Boop. Um, boop, boop. What hand is it? Left or right? Right. That's a good sign, right? Mm, not necessarily. I at least have a dingling that we are in the right direction. <laughs> uh, Cause right. Yeah. I don't get it. I think we should oh, don't start. Be obtuse investigating this area. Okay. That does sound like a good idea. Why don't... Oh, never mind. It doesn't work here. But I will cast Detect Magic uh, as a ritual. Okay. So you start your ritual. You take out your various arcane accoutrement mm -hmm. and start casting your spell. I'm going to uh, try to investigate things. Okay. Uh, yes. So the two of you are going to walk around and investigate? Would it be investigation for me or would uh, religion work? I will allow you a religion roll to take a different uh, stance on what's going on. Okay. I would like to investigate. Okay. So, uh, Lindo and Wilf, go ahead and roll me investigate. Uh, Jackson, roll me a uh, religion check. And we'll start with Lindo. I look at the giant marble thing and I touch it going, ooh. Okay. Very pretty. You, ah. So, you're, you're investigating that. What was your roll? Six. Okay. You're taking a look at the the tall marble column. Uh, the the manacles that are hanging from it seem mm -hmm. to be attached to the top very sturdily uh, with a, a thick iron band around the top. Mm. And they're hanging down so that a, a humanoid, more than likely of a, about middle height, uh, although with a bit of a stretch, could probably get a, one of the smaller races, uh, would be shackled up. And you actually have a vague recollection of something very similar to this. Uh, it looks like the kind of post they they shackle people to basically cor do corporal punishment of, of lashes. This looks like a lashing post. Hmm. I see. Linda, what was your role? Or sorry, excuse me, uh, Wilf? It was a six. A six. Yes. <laughs> well... Because I am so very smart and have this ability to be good at pretty much everything. Everything. Obviously, I got a far superior role to Lindo of uh, the total of, of course, a seven. Ha ha! Okay. Wait. Oh. Your far superior seven uh, is finding yourself standing next to Lindo, indeed lo looking at what looks to be a lashing post. It's a lashing post, right? Uh, very similar to uh, what you've seen when people got lashed to the mast uh, when uh, you were part of the Colfrasian Navy. Um, although this one seems to be far more elaborate, and uh, there are rust spots on the chains that don't look like they are entirely there from just old age. Mm. I mean, mm. to be honest, the last time I saw one of these things were like, you know, <laughs> it wasn't for corporal punishment, if you know what I mean, eh? Well, I mean, 
there was that time that someone tried to do a mutiny on a ship and, and uh, we, we lashed him to the main pole and the, the captain uh, whipped the ever-loving sin out of him. Um, I mean, there were whips involved, yeah. You know, yours sounds like a bit more of an entertaining thing than uh, my personal experiences with that. I I have to tell you, having having been so, it, it's not so fun when you're getting whipped because, you know, your job. Right. I mean, there was money involved. I mean, uh, see, uh, that sounds once again like a much more pleasant thing. Not so Jackson. Maritime. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Uh, your religion role was. I'm gonna have to go with the the literally far superior nineteen. Okay. Go, oh, I see, overachiever. <laughs> so, <laughs> so with the nineteen, you're taking a look around and. You are you remembering some of the different churches to Paylor that you have seen around, uh, especially in the the kingdom of Kellen Hall, uh, especially in some of the older ones. And you are reminded of the floor plan of a couple of the older ones that you've seen, and it does it does kind of bring you to mind as to the layout of what the 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 actual foundations of this church look like. Okay. So you're fairly certain just from that, you're like, hey, this this may have been at one point a, a church to Paylor, but all iconography is gone. Not a single reference or scratching or symbol of Paylor uh, remains in this entire area. And when you're looking at the, the post there with the chains and the massive handprint, all you can think of, the only name that comes to mind that rings in your head constantly the moment you look at it is Bane. Yes, Bane. Bane had to have done this. Oh? What, the lashing post? The The actual Bane? Either that or his right hand. (laughs) Just just the right hand. (laughs) Can you imagine how ridiculous that would look? Just a red hand wobbling around. (laughs) This is about the time, Elliot, that your detect magic spell is going off, and you are looking around, and uh, you get the over kind of that the overarching necrotic energy that that is suffusing the entirety of the rotting hills. And as you're kind of kind of pushing through that, and and you're reaching out with your senses, you're looking particularly at the area in front of you first thing you notice that the pillar itself is absolutely magic. Uh, It seems to have bits of enchantment, evocation, uh, necromancy, and a few other things kind of woven into it. The handprint itself seems to also be emanating uh, bits of uh, what looks almost like a little divination with some uh, transmutation and evocation as well. But most notably, as you're, as you're walking around and looking at it closer, when you go around the back of the pillar, you see what seems to be a hole about six feet, or excuse me, six inches around uh, that looks to be about large enough for someone to reach maybe a hand into. I sigh, look at it. Go ahead and make me an arcana check. Absolutely. If you would be so kind. Ooh. Ooh? Ooh. Plus six. So six plus 14 is 20. Okay. So you you, you take a look at it and you're, you're, you're thinking, like you hold up your hand and you look at it. And then you're starting to kind of read the, that weave of magic a little bit more. And you think you recognize what this actually is. Mm-hmm. This is a this is a ritual site. This is something has to happen here to move forward. And as you look around, you realize this is a ritual site to enter something. Mm-hmm. There's a doorway nearby, and this is key to it. And what you're recognizing it for is it looks like it was designed that someone would be chained up to it, and then someone else would activate the pillar by reaching in and look and grasping what looks to be a series of activation runes inside the hole. And that somehow would activate and bring the entrance to light. 
Mm. You look concerned, Elliot. I repeat what he just said. I... So should we draw straws? I would like to bow out of this particular challenge because I am of a much smaller body and have so much less blood inside me. I will... Uh I need to put... I think because it's an arcane lock, I will need to be the one to reach my hand and... I was thinking that myself. So... Which then leaves two of us. Okay. <clears throat> Rock, paper, scissors. Don't bother. Okay. But what? As I head over to the post. Lindo, you okay. seem to have practice with this. I have some. <laughs> For reasons. Why don't you help oh. Jackson? For raisins? That's that's no no. You know, I never economy. thought our dynamic would be like this, but here we go. Okay, <laughs> Aliup. Don't enjoy this too much. I do not think I enjoy this at all. Good. The atmosphere is eh, uh, not good. It's a little wanted. Do you, do you need some music? Uh, no, just, no, just, yeah, just no. I, I play 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 the scene in. You know, do, 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 do. Mr. Wilf, you might want to stand back. Oh, that sounds lovely. Okay, do me a favor, Jackson. What? Don't die. Of all of us, I think I will outlive you all. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you've got you've got like a fraction of the expected lifespan, but I think that's pretty pretty fair. That that sucks. Okay, I I I put Jackson in the locks. Okay. So you you reach up and you clasp him in there. Basic latch system, no key. Okay, here you go. Yeah, it, as soon as you clasp them around his uh, his wrists, they clack closed without any sort of latch. I wonder if that's magnets. And as you as he does so, uh, they actually seem to stretch up and pull your arms up over your head. So <sighs> decently uncomfortable, just at the the, the the edge of pain, where you're reaching up and it's holding you up. Nope. Definitely do not like this. Oh. Let's hurry this up. Breathe, breathe. Mister Will, have a cure wounds ready. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I reach my right hand. Okay. Into the hole. You reach in and you grab something that seems almost like a kind of a knobbly oblong sphere of some kind. Ew. And as you grab it, you feel this surge of power. It pulses through the column. And for you, Elliot, you feel like you've suddenly gained insight into what this is about as you're activating it. And at the same time, you all note that the ground shakes and the Uh handprint Uh that's behind Elliot over there, you actually see it, like the, the earth around it actually starting to move and shake from underneath. Jackson... There's almost immediately this shooting, racking pain that starts to arc Ah, through your body. Lindo and Wilf, you're noticing arcs of black lightning shooting across Jackson's body. Okay. It seems to be kind of almost on the visible skin. You're actually seeing it cutting open. Safe word. Little slices. Hurry this up. Do I need to dispel this? Do I need to dispel this? Elliot? Not yet. It's working. Okay, you're, Safe you word. hold on. You're holding on to as it. As long as this Jackson up. is okay, he is the one who will tell me to stop. Speaking of which, go ahead and roll me a Constitution save, Jackson. Like a beast. Thirteen. Okay. <laughs> so, Jackson, you take. Let's see. 23 points of damage oh. and one level of exhaustion oh. as your body is racked with pain. He is screaming in agony and as it's happening I mm-hmm. take some of that damage. You're attempting to take it with your abjurer shield? Yeah. With your ability? I don't know if it'll work because it's literally inside him but um, I will try. I will allow you to absorb some of that damage. Okay. I will take eight of it. Okay, so eight of that damage. Well, you don't necessarily notice much of it because you're screaming in agony at this point, Jackson. But the rest of you see the the kind of the 
icy mist of uh, Elliot's shield seems to kind of come into effect there for just a moment and absorb some of the lightning. But behind Elliot and behind the pillar, the two of you, Lindo and Wilf, you see from the ground black iron fingers pierce out of the dirt and a large, massive, almost two-story tall black iron hand comes up out of the ground and as it reaches up, it pointing all fingers towards the air, they start to curl down. I'm really thinking I should dispel this. Turn and this as up! They, and as they come down to form a grasping hand, the center palm, which is roughly around where, I'd say maybe 10 feet at this point behind Elliot, glows a bright, brilliant ruby, and you're looking at a glowing red doorway in the middle of the hand as you're looking at a massive symbol of Bane given form right there directly behind you and the lightning stops and that dear digitizers is where we will leave you for this episode thank you for joining us on another episode of hazardous endeavors ah, and until ah, next time ah, game, game on, on internet, internet. Ah.